Yo, 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 what's going on, guys? It's your boy, Player X, here with the Semi Limited Podcast. As usual, before we get into today's episode, just want to thank everybody for listening in, for clicking on that link, and catching all these episodes that we'd be dropping on a bi weekly basis because we're trying to work that hard for you guys. Make sure you guys have the content you guys deserve to be browsing, listening to, digesting on your way to work, uh, maybe on your way to locals, or even that big event. Give you something to think about. But we appreciate all of you guys for tuning in and for showing love on all the platforms for the podcast. Thank you very, very much. You guys allow us the ability to give back to the community in a different way that we normally would. So I appreciate that from you guys. Before we get into today's episode, which will just be a recap of the YCS Richmond that happened over the weekend. As usual, you know that we got to go over a couple of our plugins. So speaking of, first... Shout out to Unplugged Gaming and Manly's New York for sponsoring the podcast. Be sure to join their Discord server in the description box below to be a part of all of their TCG communities. They have got Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, uh, Magic the Gathering, One Piece, Digimon. Shit, I've even seen Beyblades there. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> you can get whatever you want at that store. So be sure to holler at them and join their Discord to be a part of their communities. And if you stop in store in Manliest, New York, you can be sure to mention the semi-limited podcast and they'll be sure to hook you guys up. Also, while you're down there in that description box below, go and click on that link tree link and it'll bring up a tab with all of our sites and all the places where you can listen to the podcast or interact with us in any way, shape or form, send us messages, whatever you want, fan mail, whatever you guys wanted to do. Uh, but when you click on there, you'll see all of our social sites pop up. Be sure to follow, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and stay up to date with all of those social sites, guys. Because those are the ways we're going to communicate with not only you guys, but also with giveaways, announcements, uh, certain things that happen, anything that needs to get mentioned will also be said to you guys on these platforms. And speaking of social platforms, as I said in the last episode, we finally hit 100 followers on Instagram last week. So that means that the end of next episode, which will be this Friday, we will announce the winner for the Instagram follower giveaway. And if you haven't entered already, we'll show you how to in a couple of minutes. But also be prepared for the other giveaways we got going on when we hit 50 followers on TikTok, 100 followers on Twitter or X, and then 200 followers this time on Instagram or YouTube. And I think we're already at like 130 on YouTube. So that's probably one of our higher... Uh, platforms right now the next episode we will be announcing the instagram giveaway and to enter it all you have to do is these simple steps just check out our instagram page and you'll see a post with a beautiful mat on it that is the giveaway mat that is the prize for this giveaway just so you guys can see it but to enter it all you have to do is follow the instagram page which isn't anything crazy you guys should already be following the page to begin with because you love us so much you have to like that specific post with the mat on it as well it'll also say giveaway post so just make sure you're looking for that and then the last thing you have to do is comment one thing that you enjoy about the semi-limited podcast. And that's it, guys. Whether it be the material that we cover, whether it be just the personalities of everybody, including myself, Mr. Perfect, uh, Mr. Teaster, Trent, our Discord mod, any of that. Or maybe it's just a giveaway, guys. If you guys just like getting giveaways and getting free shit, be, free, be sure to tell us that down below as well. But you have to comment on that post. That is the only way we will have the giveaway winner selected is by commenting and liking that post so be sure to go do both as well as follow the page and you'll be entered in there the drawing will be on thursday thursday evening so we will have that announced for friday's episode so don't be worrying about that and thank you to everyone who shows love to us who's been supporting and this is just our way of giving back to you guys for helping us out uh, in these little ways also be sure to catch Brad, aka Mr. Perfect, live streaming on Twitch every Saturday night at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's the East Coast for all those who are in uh, the United States of America. And if you are not, just make sure you are in the New York time zone. His Twitch will be in our link tree, uh, link down below as well, which you can go click on. It'll be above our Twitch stream, which is the semi limited one. So you can go catch Mr. Perfect or Semi Perfect Gaming on Twitch every Saturday night. He'll be doing deck profiles. Uh, interacting with everyone, de deck theorying. He's been doing a lot of grinding on EDO Pro as well as Master Duel. And he's been having some fairly uh, interesting streams to say the very least. So be sure to go on there, jump in there, find out what all the hubbub is about. And be sure to catch his attention because everything that happens on his stream, he's sure to tell me in the Friday night wrap up. With that all out the way, guys, tonight we're just going to be recapping YCS Richmond that happened over the weekend and then and went down over the last couple of days, not only in Richmond, but as well as the local area as well here in Syracuse, New York. So bringing it up to Richmond, it happened over the weekend, started on Friday for the pre-reg, and then we had a nice little Saturday, uh, Sunday event, which was really, really good. 
a lot of the players were, I would say, out there with their deck range. It was like 47% of the pie chart for all of the 1,440 duelists that entered was like all rogue. It was insane, like the amount of like different decks that we actually got a chance to see. Uh, but there was only one winner, guys, and we all know what happened there. So instead of having a top 64, they actually did not have enough players in attendance to have a top 64. So it was actually cut down to a top 32, which means most people who are X2 going into day two were on the fence about whether they even wanted to continue playing or not, just knowing that if they had bad tiebreakers or if their matches weren't good enough, if they tied to the wrong person, you know, like all the politics behind the Yu-Gi-Oh topping system was in full effect, but that did not stop these top 32 duelists from dueling their heart out. So without any further ado, let's cut to that top cut and then see what we are working with. So the top 32 for YCS Richmond is as follows. We had one Salomon Great player, one Cashier player, defying all the odds. I don't know how he did that. <laughs> one Dynamorphia player, one Manadium, two Makankos, three Infernoble Knights, three Labyrinth, three Pearly, four Rescue Ace, five tier limits and eight count them eight unchained players in that top cut insane to me very nice diversity to say the least like there's a bunch of decks you wouldn't think of in there like um cash tira salmon a couple of the oldies even the Dy dynamorphia was stunning his way up to the top and a lot of decks that we are really familiar with such as pirelli unchained tier limits rescue ace medadium even makankos have been up there uh as far as representation lately for some odd reason but hey a bunch of diverse decks in the format, I'll take that. And then fast forward over to top 16, which we had left one Labyrinth player, one Makanko player, one Horus tier elements, and then two regular tier elements. So it's three tier, element, tier elements in general. We have three Infernobles and uh, still all of them made it in. We have two Sinful Rescue Ace. So instead of the four, I got cut down to two. Uh, we have two Prelly, so we lost a Prelly player there. And then four Unchained players made it to top 16, which was half of what was there in top 32. So then we fast forward over to the top eight, where we have one Rescue Ace now, one Infernoble, one Tier Lament Horus, one Pearly, and then a whopping four Unchained. Half of top eight was Unchained. Talk about power in a format, because not only did half of them get cut out between top 32 and top 16, but now all four of them that were in top 16 made it to top eight so they didn't lose a single unchained player which is crazy to me which left top four as one pirelli player one infernoble and two unchained players so they finally got cut down in half and then we all know what happened there uh the finals actually wound up being an unchained mirror match so both of those unchained players beat both the pirelli and the infernoble knight and made it to the final stage where they then duked it out and then we had our winner joe Bellafiore take it all down so congrats to him for winning it all with unchained but i wouldn't really call it a comeback i, I mean because people have definitely known about unchained being in the format for a while even decks like pirelli and rescue ace and infernoble like infernoble i will give you maybe is like a deck that you wouldn't normally see too much of but with the new support that came out with the dempsey's the new charles links and stuff like that it's definitely a prominent deck to say the very least it's not a deck that i would take lightly and We've all had exposure to all these decks in some way, shape, or form. So, like, to say that these decks are, are coming out of nowhere is a little bit far-fetched. But I definitely wouldn't call it a comeback. Unchained has been around for months. And people are, definitely got caught lacking on it at this YCS. Especially with Rescue Ace being one of the most favorite decks this format. Or even any Sinful Engine, really. Uh, all of those engines have been seeing a lot more popularity and a sudden surge. So you would think that maybe the Rescue Ace, maybe the PK builds, or anything like that would be able to utilize and maximize out on those ceilings, but it really wasn't like that. I, not to say that the Rescue Ace wasn't in the top cut, uh, you know, nicely represented, because there was four of them in the top 32 at, at, at the very least, but it just seemed to just fall apart. By the time we got the top four, there wasn't even a single Rescue Ace there, so... I mean, hey, I don't know. Maybe the Unchained players are finding the sauce. Maybe they all opened up good or they all had some uh, inside game knowledge as to how to maneuver the waters of when you're playing against a Rescue Ace player or something like that. Because to say that it's a favored matchup, I would definitely not say that. Rescue Ace, on paper, should be taking Unchained out 100% of the time. Once you uh, get hit with one of those alerts or contains, like that's powerful not being able to be used as material for your link summons to be able to be influenced like that is definitely something that i think should be noted for sure uh, speaking of notes too 
I don't know why, but a lot of pro players were catching some serious heat this YCS. Uh, not even just like in person, but also online as well, which was very, very surprising to me. I shouldn't say not because of the how the Yu-Gi-Oh community is as far as toxicity, because I know that this game can sometimes generate or uh, adhere to people's toxic sides, but I don't know. It just seemed like a little bit unwavering. Like, it, it, like, the, like there shouldn't have been that much. Crystal Bach, who made the top four by playing Pirelli, was receiving massive amounts of hate, especially during his feature match on the big screen from the Twitch chat of all things. And they only went crazier after realizing that he had accidentally misplayed. And I think there was a play where he had Dark Ruler No More to player and then slapped on a Typhon and then tried to swing for game or whatever it was. And then the player scooped, so... I guess he won that game, and then by the time they realized Dark Ruler No More had been in effect, it was already uh, game two. They already scooped and accepted the game state as it was, so some people were calling him a cheater for that. But I don't even really mind that much so much as it, just people being downright hateful and disrespectful about the things that they were saying. Like, people were getting banned from chat and probably from the Twitch server left and right for some of the... the hate that was spewing from their mouths about and to chris like whether it be about his gameplay whether him as a person yada yada and hey i'm not one to defend anyone uh everyone has their their own battles their own demons that they're fighting through and whatever and uh ha everyone has their own story behind things that happen in their life but for another person to judge them on that or at least hold it over their head like that especially when they're trying to focus on something like a feature match when not only is the pressure turned up but now you're on feature you're playing for uh top cut contention you know all that stuff everything's on the line the stress is up there the anxiety's through the roof and then now you got people who are going ahead and s basically slandering your name online and on stream for everyone else to see as well like uh it's just i don't know, left a bad taste in my mouth i i do uh, i guess I don't want to say commend Konami for banning the people who were saying disrespectful things, but like it should have been, I would say contained to a certain extent. Like that's just crazy to me that so many people were just saying so many things. Like I understand things happen and people feel some kind of way and they want to voice their opinions and stuff like that. But like, th this isn't the time or the place. There's a time and a place to do things. And this just wasn't the time. And even players like Pat who received a lot of hate as well for his misplay on his feature match as well causing people to think of him as a cheater. And that was just crazy to me. I, I, I by no means agree with that. And, you know, I do agree that mistakes do happen. And sometimes we're thinking too fast or playing too far ahead of ourselves to notice that all these little interactions and um, all these little things that might make a big difference overall. But that doesn't mean that you're cheating. I mean, I think if you have malicious intent while doing it, then you could be considered a cheater. It's not like he went into that game thinking, oh, I'm going to shark this the shit out of this guy. I mean, most people don't know, but there are three judges that are sitting right there uh, watching over you. No one else picked it up as well. Or if it wasn't picked up, it wasn't picked up until later. Uh, you have the actual head judge of the event right there as well. So, like, it's not like he was blatantly trying to do these things. Yeah, we, guys, we're all people. We're human. We make mistakes. We, like, have slip-ups. We might overgap something. We might overlook something. We might, you know not be thinking 100% clear view or uh, or big picture, but that doesn't mean that we all have some sort of hidden agenda or have some sort of animosity towards the game. We all play this game because we like it. We all enjoy it. We all love it. And I hope that one day the Yu-Gi-Oh community will start to spread love instead of hate, man. Like, And, and not to say that I'm here preaching words and whatever like that, but while I'm talking and on it, I just want people to try and uplift people and help them out instead of drag everyone down. Like, if you, you want to be mad or upset that someone made a misplay that's cool but to go ahead and call someone a cheater to label someone you know malicious uh or say that someone's trying to have an unfair advantage when they were just playing the same game and it's not like the other opponent no noticed it either not only are you responsible for your cards but you are are responsible for the game state which means you also need to be reading your opponent's cards making sure that everything they're doing is up to par that they're not making any misplays that you something's not going on that you're overlooking like the ability to special summon when a monster is equipped by when a monster you control is equipped by a card instead of just a monster in general but I think that somehow if everyone wants to be the you know the best duelist, but I think that somehow, at least in some way, shape, or form, we need to start being the best person first. And that includes the way we carry ourselves on events, off stream, as well as on stream. 
So, I mean, that's just my two words for the Yu-Gi-Oh! community. You can do what you want with it. You know, slaughter me, praise me, whatever you want. But that's just the way I looked at it. We all need to start looking inward before we start looking outward. So, But unfortunately, none of the semi-limited players who went out to Richmond did anything uh, too crazy. Uh, I'm sure they all had a good time down there as well, especially since the stories I've heard. Uh, except for Noah Clay. So shout out to Noah Clay from uh, Syracuse. He actually won his Edison flight. He actually was, I want to say, 4-0 before he wound up having a bad luck day and just dropped out. But he went and did an Edison flight and actually won one of the side events to win himself a nice little Nimster uh, hamster mat. So congrats to him for basically holding it down and doing something uh, where nothing was happening. So, And then also, speaking of winning, uh, I also attended my local's Rarity Collection event. It was the 25th anniversary Rarity Collection of uh, event for most people's locals and for those who didn't have it basically it's just basically you know usual locals and whatnot and then you have a entry of 15 dollars or whatever it is you get three packs of rarity collection or whatever else your your ots wants to give you and then you enter to play a tournament and the weird part about this is usually our locals has top cut after swiss and then that's how we use to determine these prizings but for some reason this was just a different type of event or whatever it was but there was no top cut there was just first place at the end of swiss got the mat so you best believe a whole bunch of politicking was happening <laughs> but uh, i went there over the weekend and i eventually uh took down the event and got myself a mat for myself so i got myself a mat as well uh by playing adventure sprite and it was a fun day we played i think four rounds uh, had fun all the way around. Everyone was uh, enjoying themselves. It was a great time, a great experience. Uh, it was a little intense at the, the last finals match. I played against a, another uh, a local player, really, really great. Her name is Austin. And we, before the match even started, told ourselves that, hey, we're going to hold ourselves pretty high accountable and we're not going to take back things and we're, or, you know, we're going to play on, we're going to you know play as serious as we can because the mat's on the line. We both play Outledge. We both like the mat. It looks fire. If anyone, came, if it came down to anyone in that finals with me, I'm glad it was here because we both were really playing for that mat. Like we both enjoy Outledge. The, the, we both thought the mat looked dope and the fire in both of our eyes were both were there for sure trying to win that event. Uh, so if you are interested in the deck profile, I did do a quick little eight to 10 minute deck profile uh, the day after, and we dropped it on the YouTube. We came out on the Sunday slot for all of our uh, online content for you guys. But you guys can go down there on our YouTube, which is also available in the link tree link down below. Go check it out. It's the last video we dropped to go see it. Uh, be sure to like it and leave a comment as to your thoughts. Maybe there's something I can change. Maybe there's a line of play that I wasn't aware of. Or, you know, hey, maybe I made a mistake. Maybe I made a misplay and or uh, I explained something the wrong way and you guys need to correct me. So I am not opposed to having criticism dumped on me when it comes down to it. But at least it's what is need be, you know. And I think the last thing we're going to talk about is just another uh, upstate news for those who are in the Syracuse area uh, who are unaware. Millennium Gaming in Rochester, New York will be hosting an OTS championship on November 19th at 11 a.m. So be sure to be there at 11 a.m. Remember, guys, daylight savings just happened over the weekend. So we lost an hour of sleep. So time's got set ahead. Or sorry, time's got set back. So we lost an hour. But... Just make sure that when you're driving to your locations, you keep that into consideration. I know that some people can be a little woozy with it or not take effect until like, you know, a week or so. They don't set their, their clocks at their house home, their alarms and all that stuff, but be sure to do all that. And you guys do not want to mess to, miss this. They usually tend to get about an average of about 40 to 60, 60 players for their events. Uh, so definitely be prepared accordingly. Uh, and for those who don't know, an OTS championship, it's a small tournament. I would say a smaller size tournament that OTSs will put together that include invites to this year's or next year's nationals. So this one will include four invites to next year's nationals, as well as the winner receiving a very special mat from the season. And if I'm not mistaken, I want to say it's those dark hole dragon mat, I want to say. So uh, if you are a fan of that archetype or that monster, or even just want to get a nice little mat for yourself or earn yourself your invite for nationals without going to a bigger event like a regional or, a, or even a YCS or anything like that, be sure to uh, come out to Rochester, New York's Millennium Games on November 19th to enter their OTS championship. But with all that being said, guys, just want to send a light for you guys to listen to on your week as you guys are 
commuting out to work or traveling to your locals or hanging out with your friends or whatever you guys get done just wanted to recap on richmond get you guys all the insight information as far as the spicy drama that happened behind there and as well as all the informative decks and um placements that everyone had as well so before we start running out of life points here i just want to remind you guys go up to that link tree link Sorry, go down to that link tree link in the description box below. Click it, follow all the sites. You guys already know Instagram is very, very hype right now. So you're going to go to our Instagram, find our latest post, which will be a picture of the beautiful cloth mat that we have, courtesy of Sean McCracken, who donated to the channel to give away to you guys. And uh, click on that uh, post, like it, and comment one thing that you enjoy about the Semi Limited podcast. Don't care what it is, it could be the content about it it can be the personalities it can be the things that we're doing outside of it whatever it is that you like about semi-limited that got you in here hooked with us be sure to drop it down below and you'll be entered into that giveaway where you can win yourself that mat for yourself you can win that mat for yourself uh also while you're on there be sure to follow all of our also social medias we'll be doing more giveaways as we hit different goals throughout the time on uh the internet spectrum so the more time sorry we'll be doing more giveaways the more goals we hit as we continue to progress and grow so thank you for all that uh as a reminder go down to sorry as again as a reminder shout outs to unplug gaming for sponsoring the podcast all these nice boxes and cool things that you guys are getting from giveaway posts we get strictly from them so shout outs to them for helping us out and giving us a little bit more that we can give back to you guys as well as well as be on the lookout for the next semi-limited podcast hosted event there. I was thinking maybe we'd do a tag team tournament, maybe a 3v3. You never quite know, guys. I'm, I'm working on it. To, the more influence I get from you guys, the uh, easier it kind of gets on my end when it comes down to planning these things. Uh, and also, last but not least, make sure to check out Brad streaming on Twitch every Saturday night at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Again, Eastern Coast. So New York coast, if you guys are outside of the United States, I know we got a couple Italian, a couple of Italianos who listen. I know we got a bunch of German listeners. So if you guys are trying to catch the stream, which you guys are more than welcome to, be sure to go into that description box. Click on Brad's TCG link. So click on Brad's Twitch stream link, which will be Brad or semi -per sorry, semi perfect gaming. And then you can go ahead and join his streams every Saturday night where you can find him, where you can catch him doing deck profiles, uh, interacting with his chat, maybe going off on some tangents. You never quite know, especially with him. He, he likes to dibble dabble in other games too. So he definitely can be sure to go around and uh, appease to those who are in his chat by any means. Uh, but with that being said, guys, again, check out next uh, episode on Friday to hear if you have won the Instagram giveaway that we have out. We are all out of life points for today. I just want to thank all you guys for listening and tuning in. My name is Player X, and you have been listening to the Semi-Limited Podcast. Thank you, and good night, guys.